Uh, right, right. Welcome back everybody to YouTube channel BTC TV and we are happy to present you that the second season of blockchain stocks is going to be started right now. We continue to do this season from the place where we finished the first season. We are in the Singapore, one of the best city in the world and yes, in a couple of minutes we will start the second season where many companies will participate in our competition and I just want to remind you that the winning uh, award awaited is $100,000 for participants. Also, you can vote for your best project and also ask interesting questions and win tokens, coins from our partners. So let's get started. This is the second season of Blockchain Stars. Let's go. Welcome to Stage 1. And here, please meet our famous advisors. Nikolai Shkilev. Nikolai Shkilev is an entrepreneur, PhD, owner and co-owner of dozens of successful business projects, ICO, STO advisor, and blockchain expert. Giacomo Arcaro. Giacomo Arcaro is one of the most experienced European growth hackers. He's a professor at College des Engineers, Tag Innovation School, founder of Black Marketing Guru, and Conf Industria speaker. He exited for one million with CircaClienti.it in 2015, and now has become one of the most influential European ICO advisors with over 140,000 crypto followers. Dennis O'Neill. He has over 25 years as an investment banker. He was the managing director for SoftBank Investments and E2 Capital Office in Chicago and raised over $2 billion in capital for early stage companies to date. He is a thought leader and blockchain crypto expert and has spoken at over 25 conferences and is a sought after speaker for blockchain, STO and crypto conferences. Blockchain stars are proud to present our partners, X-Rates. BC and Law, the Blockchain Summit Austria, Malta Blockchain Summit. All right, right, welcome back everybody to YouTube channel BTC TV to the second stage of the Blockchain uh, Star season number two. Finally, we are happy to present you the second season and right now you will be able to see 12 companies which will compete each other for the winning award of $100,000 from our partners. Today, they will present their pitches to our three advisors, who are Joe Kamarwaro, who is Dennis Anil, and, uh, and Nikolai Shkilio. And three advisors will be able to choose three companies uh, in the finals. However, if you see that this is something unfair and your favorite company is not in the final stage, you can vote for your, uh, for your company and the company with the most votes will be in the final stage as well. So uh, let's get started the show and again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to start uh, asking interesting questions below this video and vote for your favorite company. And right now I'm happy to present you the first company and the first company is Bank of Memories. Right now Irina right now with us on the line. So Irina you have three minutes and uh, please <laughs> we are listening about your company about Bank of Memories. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Yes great. Um, so Again, my name is Irina. I'm uh, head of business development at Bank of Memories. Uh, it's a startup. Um, let me first introduce the idea. Um, of course, I'm sure everybody of you uh, lost information and very valuable information which you couldn't restore. 
people in the past lost it in paper, people now lose it in digital information because of lack of access. Um, we lose the history of people, cities, and sometimes the whole countries. Then somebody can just rewrite the history and you will never know the real truth. 40 mega, uh, million of terabytes of information is lost every day. Uh, that's why um, we created the opportunity, the, the chance to save information securely on blockchain, send it to the future, uh, transmit it uh, in the future, and analyze it with the help of artificial intelligence. Global Bank of Memories is a platform, uh, as I said, block, uh, based on blockchain for security of uh, information saving, and we use um, AR, uh, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence uh, to uh, make our products and functionality possible. We patented our algorithm and our trademark in 33 countries and we continue to do that in other countries, but later after we start first steps. So what is the functionality? We are presenting a family tree. We can do digital citizen digital monuments. Uh, we uh, do electronic testaments on, uh, based on smart contracts. Uh, we have personal storage, we send messages to the future, and we have generic voice, which is based on artificial intelligence, which can scan all the information about your relatives and your family, and then give you um, the uh, uh, prognosis of what can, can be danger or opportunity for you in terms of health. Who is our um, audience? So we found a way how to target uh, B2C, um, uh, B2G, and B2B segments. They, they will be, it's a platform, so we can get access to all of those customers in a different way. Right now we invest our own money. Uh, our founder, CEO on the picture, um, on the bottom, uh, on the bow, and me and our team, we uh, invest our own money. Our customers are Habsburg family in Austria, uh, it's a Chernobyl uh, nuclear power plant. We explain it, uh, we uh, just transmit information about the strategy and uh, use the experience of people uh, who are still alive after that. Independent Square and other projects like that. So we, we only have organic traffic, nothing more. And uh, we have a thousand downloads weekly. Um, so commercialization is sale of memory storage for B2C and corporations pay money from their budget for development of products and B2G it's a municipal budget for some cultural products. Here's the competitors, I will show you more in details later after this. And uh, in commercialization strategy we have, um, we developed the product this year and next year and we start uh, going to def different markets in 2020. Uh, so our investment plan, we need totally three and a half million dollars, but for first stage we need 350 uh, to, for, for software development, a decentralized um, database, uh, centralized storage and marketing. And here is our team, it's uh, small right now, but we are growing and we have core competences um, closed by uh, Andre, uh, me, and our CTO and blockchain developer. So that's okay, cool. Th thanks for sharing your information. And right now we are coming to questions and answers from our advisors. And uh, Giacomo, maybe you will start if you have some questions to about this project to Irina. Yeah. Uh, hi, Irina. This is Giacomo. I'm here in my Rome, Rome uh, uh, Office. Uh, oh, it, it's really interesting since I've uh, worked a while with the, with the, with the tokenizing those kind of assets. And me myself, I've lost a lot of data <laughs> in my life, so it's really interesting. And the more to secure our our data uh, in the blockchain, it's really interesting. Um, do, do you do you think that it may be uh, eligible also for uh, for the the countries with uh, a lot of papers like uh, uh, Bhutan or Somalia where there's no the story has, hasn't been written into the into digital assets but just on papers 
Do you have something like that? Yeah. or? Of course, uh, right now I'm working on research uh, on legislation based in different countries and in some countries, of course, blockchain technology is widely used and some not. Uh, but um, security of information is a core issue in many countries. Uh, and this, so usually information should be stored inside the country where the information is given from. Uh, so uh, this will come slowly. Uh, we have core markets where we see monetization right now and it will be enough to monetize to the level um, we want and then uh, the countries like Bhutan they uh, and other countries uh, they will slowly trans transform their legislation based seeing the Western experience because uh, obviously blockchain is most secured by okay. storing information. Okay, cool. Do we, did nice. I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Okay, and we have second advisor on the line, Dennis O'Neill. Dennis, do you have some questions to Irina? But before you will ask, I will tell Irina to turn off presentation so that we can see okay. you fully. On my face, at least. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I guess I have a couple of different questions. First is that what 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 is the actual marketing strategy for actually uh, uh, acquiring customers? I know you have. Uh, three different market sectors. I think that that would be interesting to know. And then the second point would be, what is the major different, uh, you know, differentiate differentiator between you and the competitors? And what stages are the other competitors? Are they in the market actually capturing uh, market share now, or are they at the same stage as you? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so uh, let me. Um let me start with this, how, how we going to market um, the products. Uh, so our CEO started uh, this project uh, uh, some years ago just as, as an idea, but didn't have money to market this. And what we, um, we took out, out of all the functions, we took out one is digital monument, which is um, to digitalize uh, different kind of uh, sites in the country, which is important. So we reached B2G market, we reached governments to explain them why they have to uh, digitalize their, their really like famous uh, temples. Like, uh, let me give an example. If I go to Thailand, uh, I see like 10 different temples and I have no idea what it is about. If I don't have the guide with me, I don't know anything about that. So we digitalize, do the uh, 3D um, and uh, using uh, AR we use, uh, we create videos, short videos, information, informative videos and then the customer, so our potential B2C customer is coming to scan it and like uh, you know with organic traffic thousand, uh, um, thousand downloads of the app without any marketing. This is a good uh, uh, good factor and this is how we uh, found out the way out of lack of money you know so of mm -hmm. course we plan marketing once we get investment if we don't have investment we proceed with our own money and budget money to create these digital monuments in different countries and then it will attract then customers to scan it um, and just to have a look what what is it so this is one of businesses which um, like direction of businesses which can help monetize uh, and attract customers without any kind of marketing investment. And uh, the second one is the competitors, how, why we are better or on which stage. Uh, maybe um, it would be good to, uh, to go back to the slide with competitors. There are all names. We did a um, research on that. Uh, yeah, so on which stage we are and they are. Uh, we can store, this is in, on the bottom as you can see, Global Bank of Memories, mm -hmm. it's a uh, number of copies in the system of your valuable information which is secured as 21. So it can be distributed on different computers in different countries uh, or in one country. But other systems like Google Cloud, Descent, MyHeritage and others, they only have one copy. If something happens then yeah, you, you lose this information. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Earning opportunity and all these kind of things, uh, you see, uh, there, there are factors how we analyzed our competitors. And compared to them, even though they are bigger, they are faster, they have more money, but they don't have these functionalities we have, and they don't have this algorithm uh, as we have patented. So if they want it, they have to come to us and ask. Mm. 
Okay, I think uh, more than enough explanation about this question and uh, because we have more companies on the line, uh, Irina, if you can, yeah. So right now we are coming to a very important part of the show about asking our advisors, do they want to vote for you to be your project, to be in the final? Again, each advisor has only one vote for one company to be presented in the final. And uh, I just want to thank uh, one more time to all our companies which participated in the second season. As you can see, second season is way, way higher from the first one. Competition is really tough and I don't know how the advisors will choose great companies to be in the finals because uh, if I will be in your shoes, I will select all of them, uh, at least half of them, right? So how you can choose only one, it's really a hard question. So, First company uh, has been Bank of Memories. So, uh, Giacomo, uh, do you want to vote for them? Because so as I said, you have only one. Yeah, but yeah, I was for voting them because as I, told, as I said, I lost a lot of data. Uh, but I do have a favorite, another favorite one, so. Okay. Okay, you will pass right now, okay. It's okay, because we have another, maybe advisors will save them, or maybe audience uh, will save them as well. So now, question to you, Dennis. Uh, do you want to vote for uh, Bank of Memories? Uh, no, I, I mean, for me, I think that there's, there's two companies here that are further along that are that have created third-party credibility and validation of their business models, and and I'm more interested in companies that are, although that all these companies are very, very interesting. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the validation point that uh, that uh, uh, is the tipping point that I look for for you know when when we invest into deals. Okay, no problem. Uh, we still have Nikolai Skilev later on. Maybe he will save them, or as I said, audience. So let's go to the next day, uh, the next excuse me company, and the second company is company Pink. Uh, set what I, th I think uh, you are from this company. Uh, I already uh, unmute you. So set we are. You have three minutes to present information regarding Pink. Okay, can you see my uh, slides? Yes. Cool. Okay, so yes, I am, um, I'm Seth, the CEO of, of Pink. Um, if you're interested in um, putting money away for, for a rainy day, then you, know, you, you want to make a, a big return. That's, that's pretty obvious. Everyone makes, wants to make um, solid returns on their investments. But the problem is that the odds are stacked against individuals that do that. You know, doing it yourself is time consuming, um, it's really risky. The majority of the, the, the market is, is actually controlled by trading bots and, and algorithms. And if you decided to go with a fund instead, um, they generally ask for very long term, uh, long, uh, large commitments, and they don't give you much control over the investments. So we've come up with a new form of investing, which is called team investing. And it combines uh, the best of human and machine intelligence to actually return power to people. Um, so, you know, we've got crowd wisdom, we add artificial intelligence to it, and, and, and this gives us something that we call future arbitrage. So the crowd wisdom element, and um, what that means is that we've got thousands of users all over the world, and they just spend a few moments each day telling us what they think is going to happen in the markets. Um, that information is filtered by our, our AI to, to understand what's going to happen before it happens, and so we can execute trades in the gap. And that, that's what we call future arbitrage. It, it um, improves returns, it reduces uh, costs, and it reduces risk uh, for our everyday investors. So crowd wisdom is, is not new. Um, it's been proven consistently to, to, to beat the experts. Um, whether that's you know used to guess the number of uh, jelly beans in a jar, the weight of an ox, or the likelihood of a, a global event happening, um, the U.S. government uses it to, to improve the forecasts of its full-time intelligence agents. Um, and, and so you know we, we've got 11,000 people uh, making these predictions at the moment through our app, and and so far this combination of, of crowd and AI and, and our own processing of, of the data has been. 70.58% um, accurate, 
in um, trading on the daily direction of Bitcoin, which is the first asset that we've been doing this with. Um, so we see that you know experts are not consistent. Um, and, uh, crowd wisdom is. We've been collecting data uh, through our alpha app, which launched in uh, October last year. Our machine learning went live six weeks ago. As I've said, we're more than 70% accurate so far. Um, we've been trading our, our private investors' money, but we're opening that up to everyday investors uh, at the end of the year. Um, we've got uh, a, a really, really um, fanatic community. They, they live and breathe pink. They, they love what they're doing, and, and they can't wait to, to be able to, to invest themselves. Um, the composition of that market, we, we, we kind of targeted a, a, a younger tech-savvy uh, audience, uh, in particular the 31% of this $4.5 trillion um, millennial investment um, market that, that haven't actually uh, put their money in yet. Um, but our, our early adopters are the more entrepreneurial side of that market, which we estimate to be worth just over $200 billion globally. Um, our model, uh, the, the app itself, is, is, is obviously B2C. Um, we have a B2B option where we can provide this data to businesses so that they can make business decisions. And we're also planning to insert what we do into other apps such as Challenger Banks. And, and we, um, we, we charge a monthly commission, but we actually share the profits with the people uh, that are providing us with the data. Um, We've uh, been getting uh, some, some recognition in various places. We won uh, Best AI Startup at Multi Blockchain Summit. We've been named one of the 12 uh, fintech startups to watch by Business Insider. Um, we've got a solid uh, all-round team with uh, lots of experience, including uh, previous exits, um, fully capable of delivering. Um, the competition side of things, we are a new category of investing. There's, there's, there's literally nobody doing um, uh, what we're doing and, and giving the users control and, and, and letting them earn without even necessarily investing money. Um, and we're about to uh, start uh, a £2 million raise and 10% of that, at least 10% of that has been dedicated to, to, to crowdfunding because we want our, our, our loyal fans, our pinksters as we call them, to be able to share in, in their growth and the success of what we do which is actually fully dependent on them because as we say we are built by the people for the people. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Seth, for your presentation. Can you please kindly turn off it that we can see uh, you more? And uh, I'm actually, as a, uh, I'm trying to be neutral in the show, but actually I'm very impressed with this presentation, with the numbers and what's going on here with Pink. And uh, let's start right now with Dennis O'Neill. Do you have questions to this company? Sure. Um, I think a couple of questions I have. Uh, number one is that when you say 70% accuracy, is that based upon real money or is that based upon uh, just a pro forma uh, of uh, utilizing, I don't know, whatever information uh, uh, that, you know, that you're capturing? Uh, number two is that uh, uh, I know you're doing it on Bitcoin right now. Uh, is there, what's the plans for doing other either currencies or or, or whatever other markets that you plan on trading. Okay, yeah, so um, the all of the figures since we switched the machine learning on have been live trading with real money. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, um, in terms of the other assets, yeah, we're, we're planning to do this in, in, in any area that we can get an, an investment edge. Um, the, the, the priorities right now, which we're about to go live with, are um, the NASDAQ 100 index. Mm. And, and gold. We see that they're, they're making a quite interesting combination. They're not particularly correlated to each other. And the crowd that we've got are really keen to, to start predicting on, on those assets. We, we, we kind of ask the crowd to, to, to give us their opinion on, on everything that we do. And, and that includes which assets we, we cover. Um, obviously, we will then test uh, before deploying money. Um, and then add additional assets. But we're, we're planning to, this isn't just about short-term trading. We're doing short-term trading because we can prove it relatively quickly, but we're, we're planning to, to take this all the way through to long-term VC investment, where the crowd are actually helping us to do the research into startups as well. Sure, is there, is there any particular reason why you're focusing on NASDAQ 100 and gold? I mean, that, that seems to be pretty diverse. 
Yeah, well, it was the diversity that, that is, is of interest at this early stage. So it reduces the exposure to, to what is perceived as a, obviously a very risky, volatile asset in, in Bitcoin. And it, mm -hmm. and it takes a big leap towards, you know, further diversification. Okay, thank you. Okay, and now questions to you, Giacomo uh, Marcara. Yeah. Um, hi, hi. Um, hey, hey. So I I got a lot of questions, but I would just limit to to two. Um, am I wrong if I say that you are like uh, you, you do arbitrage by using AI, isn't it? Yeah. So that the initial okay. the initial product is 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 this kind of arbitrage system, but but long term it's just about improving investment decisions through any method possible. Okay, so do you give people signals or do you accept investment? Uh, so yeah, we accept investments and we, we ultimately um, execute for all of our investors. So if someone gives us money, they don't then um, uh, make their own trades. They, they entrust okay. us to, to execute for them. Okay. Uh, but do you accept on the information that we're given by the crowd and, and ultimately okay. through the AI? Okay, do you accept fiat money or BTC or? Yeah, so we're, um, we, we have everything in place to be able to set, accept fiat as well as crypto, but when we launch, we're only accepting fiat. Um, we, okay. we, we plan to accept crypto in the new year. Okay, cool. Uh, well, okay, because we, I know a bunch of websites that um, they are pretending to do AI um, arbitrage, by they do they don't do that. Uh, that's because I don't trust them when they are centralized. So, are you planning to be decentralized in future, or? Yeah, I mean, over the long term, we we we, we definitely are. In, in the short term, you know, we we, we saw what happened with the DAO. It's uh, it, it's something that we want to build in step by step as we can test and 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 and, uh, and, and defend from from attacks on the integrity of the data that we're receiving. Um, but it's, it's very much in the plans, yes. Okay, cool. Love it. And uh, sorry, the last question. What's your gaining percentage by month uh, you have uh, achieved so far? Um, so the, the, the machine learning went live six weeks ago, and the percentage figure in those six weeks is 20... Um, 20 I'm just switching to my figures. 20.97. Okay. Uh, that's that's about double um, the movement in Bitcoin for the same time period. Okay. Yeah, because a friend of mine, if I don't get wrong, has invested like four months ago into your company, and he was really happy. So before giving the vote, I give him a call. And okay. Probably, yeah. It's name. It's Gianluca Guerra from Italy. So I will give him a call and get back to it. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot for sharing uh, information about your company set, and thanks to our advisors uh, about their questions. And uh, Giacomo, uh, how about Pink? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's been six months uh, that I'm into AI trading. Um, I knew performances of uh, Ping because while we were uh, listening to the other customers, I received some bad feedback from people who have invested into Ping, and it seems like working. So it's really hard to see startups pitching with uh, uh, an MVP, which is really working. Um, and I tested a lot of AI. Ping is working. So my answer is uh, yes. Ah, yeah, we got guys. We got first. Uh, we got first company on the in the finals. This is Pink. Uh, very great success for them. So actually, I don't know maybe your opinion about uh, that, Dennis, about Pink. But already, actually, Giacomo already saved them. But you can also comment. If you want. Yeah, no, no, I'll just say, uh, you know, I think that uh, Pink is a great company. I think that, you know, obviously that they have a unique business model. It's a trading model. Uh, I'm not much for the uh, uh, companies. Uh, you know, what, what we're committed to doing is building long-term value uh, in companies directly. Uh, and uh, not uh, we we 
I mean, on myself and uh, uh, and uh, the companies I'm involved in, we shy away from the trading uh, platforms. We we want to develop companies, not uh, not just uh, and, and not not uh, trading models. Okay, no problem. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, my congratulations to Pink uh, because uh, right now uh, they are the first actually finalist in our show. So the next company has been Coin Barb. So uh, now we are happy to present you the third company, and the third company is going to be Coin Barb, uh, and I am waiting that. Coin Barb will present their pitches in in three minutes. I'm going to unmute Pete. Uh, you have three minutes to make presentation about Coin Barb and what you are doing. Sure, I haven't got a uh, pretty presentation like the other guys, so I'm just going to pitch directly to you. Can you see me on the screen? Is it a large yes, picture? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, I'm Pete. I'm CEO and co-founder of Coin Barb. So Coinburp is a uniquely user-friendly cryptocurrency trading platform. We're set up in the heart of London, and we have a heavy focus on improved user experience, community, and education. Uh, we focus our efforts on the retail market, and it's a market that we feel very few other companies specialize in. We're proudly one of the first cryptocurrency companies in the UK uh, to secure UK banking in a notoriously difficult climate. We've also recently agreed a deal with an internationally recognized banking provider to enable Euro, enable Euro deposits uh, and trading against crypto pairs. And our, our trading platform launched in the summer of 2019 and we launched with 15 minute onboarding, um, instant deposits for fiat, simple three step trading experience as well. We already have over a thousand users, we facilitated over a thousand transactions and our trade volume totals over a million pounds. We believe at, at Coinbase, and as a huge advocate of, of crypto and blockchain technology, that it's ingrained uh, in us as a mission to break the common misconception that maybe you need to be young and, and technically minded to enter this space. And we aim to achieve this through the power of transparency and education. Now, for us, that means being completely open with our customers from uh, currently dedicating a page about the company where anyone can see who runs it and, and the specialists in our roles to allow anyone to view and recommend changes on the company's roadmap. So we set out to develop an innovative uh, technology, automating each and every process that spans the entire standard customer journey. And that means the user registration, mandatory two-factor authentication, account verification, fiat and crypto deposits, trading and finally withdrawals. They're all completed without any intervention from our team. So what that means for customers, for the first time and uh, especially in the UK they can register and begin trading on weekends so if we compare that against your traditional companies in this space um, a lot of the time you will see ID verification or fiat crediting on, on the accounts will be done manually um, that causes issues a lot of companies don't operate over the weekend so you are really left to the business week to get this cleared we feel with this approach we've opened the door for an entirely different type of user who actually lives in crypto or wants the flexibility of cashing out to fiat to their bank account 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I'll give you a bit of background about me. So my journey into crypto started in 2015. Um, with only a thousand pounds, I started a company called BitBroker. We specialized in trading Bitcoin on third party platforms. Uh, over the next four years, we amassed a turnover of 100 million. We totaled 145,000 trades across 38,000 customers as well. And my passion is to continue within this industry. I love it. It led me to start this new company, uh, Coinbert, where I think we can truly make a big difference. Short term on the roadmap over the next six months, we're looking to implement card payments. We're going to vastly expand our crypto offering and we will provide 100% insured cold storage crypto custody as well. Long term vision is to become an international brand by building a decentralized banking solution on blockchain. Um, here at Coinbird, we see crypto and blockchain-based technology making a significant impact on everyday lives in years to come, and we hope we can play some part in that amazing transformation. Thanks very much. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Pete, for your presentation. And, uh, you know, competition is really becoming harder and harder, a very strong one. I'm glad to see that such great companies are participating in this second season. So, Giacomo, uh, what questions will be to this company, Coinbird, to Peter? 
Okay, so first of all, without the, the presentation, it, it, it's hard to fully understand the sense of the company. But, uh, so that's why I'm asking you something a bit more about um, your competitors and who's your team? Sure, so if I start with the competitors, um, they're all retail centric competitors. The, the major one that you'll know is Coinbase. Um, okay. Coinbase, yeah, Coinbase will be the major one. Um, I'll give you an yeah. idea about how they operate in the UK space. You, you may or may not yeah. know they increasingly through um, banking for UK customers. They've, I feel, they've okay. left. They've left the space. They've left the retail space. They're, they're more interested in okay. paying in institutional investors. That's where we can we can sit in. There's, there's not many people I feel that have been in the space. I mean, crypto's only been around for ten years, and I've been around for half of that time. Uh, running a successful company, multi-million pound turnover, profit in the millions as well. Um, and I think it's really important to have someone who has that experience to, to uh, take this company to, to the next step. And that's what I feel I can do with Coinbird. Our team consists of 11 people. So we've got around four devs. Uh, we've got marketing team. We've got support. Um, we've got compliance. We've got myself. That does the lot. <laughs> I do some marketing. I do some, uh, do, do some compliance. And I do this sort of stuff as well. All right, thanks uh, to your answers. And uh, my question will be to do, Dennis O'Neill, do you have questions to CoinBurp? Uh, it, it, uh, I would agree, it's, it, it's, a, uh, it's a hard presentation to follow. Uh, it's, uh, although, that, I mean, I understand the space cool. very well. Cool. I understand that uh, uh, what you're trying to do, but uh, um, it's hard to disseminate exactly where uh, your market advantages are um, uh, compared to the other competitors. I mean, obviously, everybody knows Coinbase. So, uh, although that it sounds very, very intriguing, uh, uh, I didn't see. I mean, for me, it was hard to see what the major market advantages that you have in this space, opposed to uh, what's already out there. So, if if you could if you could address that, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, the, the two major focuses, I guess, for us, is, but there's probably more um, I could explain, but I'll start with two. It's ease of use. Uh, we set out with a customer being our, our focus on everything we do. A lot of companies, they, they focus initially on product. Um, you'd see that a lot with these companies specializing or, or targeting the institutions. Products, their first thing. We specialize in, in customer journey. We've done our feedback. We, we spoke to our customers with my other company and found exactly what they are after in the crypto space. We've built that around that. Um, if you look at our website, it's, it, it may look simple and, and, and slick, but trust me, there's a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of time and meetings and workshops that have gone into that to make it look like that and with all the customer feedback as well. Um, another thing is automation. I think it's, it, it's so important to automate the whole journey because if you take individually each single step that the customer goes on from in the initial registration up until maybe the trade or the withdrawal uh, you'll usually find companies have a manual process along that journey and the minute you have a manual process it really slows things down um, you're you're exposed to human error you you traditionally I can only work on the weekends when they do checks we set out to uh, integrate to uh, best-in-class industry leaders such as Jumio for our our uh, verification, account verification. Um, we've, we've leveraged the power of APIs with our banking providers to ensure that the, uh, the, the accounts can be credited instantly with fiat. Um, and we, we make sure that ethos is taken across the website throughout any, any user journey. Sure, let me just do a quick follow-up question. Are, are you looking for people to move from, uh, you know, p uh, companies like Coinbase over to you? Are you looking for the new users or are you looking at a combination thereof? And if you're looking for the new users, are you, are you focused on the education sector of the market? Yeah, so we are both looking to expand the market. We, we, and I, I, I personally know this uh, from, uh, from my previous company. A lot of people fall off the bandwagon on route to purchasing the, the, their first cryptocurrency. Um, I, I hate to imagine how many people during the last bull run in 2017 uh, had the intention of purchasing, but for whatever reason, the websites were being were crashing. The processes were too complicated to follow. Um, they they didn't get into this space. Um, we're looking to to enter this new market of new customers, as well as taking customers from other competitors. The way we do this is through a unique marketing strategy. 
we're working with um, what we feel in the UK, millennials uh, follow a lot. They're on social media, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Twitter. So we are working very closely with social media influencers, and it's something that no one else is doing in this space. We feel to, to really educate and bring more people uh, and, and bring the, 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 the good word of cryptocurrency and blockchain. We need to uh, get into this space of, of young millennials um, who, are, who, who are looking to invest in, in, in crypto, but just find it too hard. All right, thanks for your answers and for your presentation as well. Uh, do you come and do you want to something comment on them? Yeah, no, uh, I, it was really interesting the background of the of the um, this, um, the CEO. Uh, yeah, it's a cool company. I already expressed my my vote for Pink, so uh, I can express another yeah. vote. But it's really interesting. And just another thing: so the next time we will present something, something will be better if uh, he will do with with slides because we exactly. it was really hard to. To, to follow yeah. him, uh, even if the project was really cool. Yeah, I agree. And then is your opinion? Uh, yeah, it was, it, it was a little difficult to follow, though, that he has an impressive resume. I think that uh, yeah. uh, it's, you know, you know uh, it's another, you know, um, company that is really focused on more of the trading side than actually building long-term value uh, as far as uh, uh, building a, a company. Uh, um, so it's, you know, it's just, it's, it, it's a company that's just not really in my wheelhouse as far as, uh, you know, things that we look for. Okay, no problem. Uh, as I say, they still have a chance. Maybe they will be saved by Nikolaj Kiliev or by Audi. Next company is going to be Opiria P Data, and Christian Long right now is on the line with us. Christian, you have uh, three minutes uh, presentation about uh, Opiria P Data, what you are doing. So we are all everybody. Uh, we are here that listening. So. Um... Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Maxine, uh, and thanks for having me. Can you guys see my slides? Yes. Okay, perfect, because I need my slides. Um, so what I'm presenting to you today is uh, Operia, which is a personal data marketplace. Uh, my name is Christian, and I'm the founder and CEO of Operia. Um, let me quickly start with the, the, the underlying problem, which explains why we're doing what we're doing. So the reason is that companies worldwide need um, data from their target customers and their opinions so that they can better understand their needs and requirements, what then allows them to design better products and services that fuel desire, plus um, they can uh, heavily improve um, their marketing and sales activities. That's the reason why data brokerage is, uh, as of today, a 300 billion US dollars uh, per year business. Uh, which is growing um, on average with about 10% every year. The issue is that the current model in the data brokerage business is heavily broken. Um, data brokers are stealing um, data from consumers globally without their consent and without compensating them. They're heavily violating data privacy laws and with all those uh, data protection regulations which are becoming uh, enforced uh, globally, um, actually what they're doing today is going to be stopped. So that's, that's the underlying problem. And the solution that we are um, offering and we are building is a personal data marketplace, um, which allows companies to directly buy data and opinions from consumers globally. Um, the way it works is that companies can send data and opinion requests to consumers, and those consumers can then sell their personal data, their opinions to companies, and they're getting directly compensated. The advantage for companies is that they get fast and easy access to global data and opinions. They get valid data of high quality and they get even more specific data than they can purchase from data brokers today. We're offering um, data like data from wearables, browsing behavior, online purchases, eye tracking, emotions, um, and many more. And on the other side, the great thing for consumers is that they are in full control of their personal data. The data privacy is protected due to encryption and blockchain, plus they're getting proper compensation for the data that they're selling to um, companies. Um, our product today is um, 
the the core of our product is uh, the Operia Studio web application, which is the interface for companies that they can access. And through Operia Studio, they can get in touch with our consumers. They can buy data from them. They can buy their opinions. Um, on the consumer side, we have the Operia app for iOS and Android. Um, consumers download the app to their smartphone, and this allows them to receive surveys, data requests, and they can sell their opinions and their data to the Operia app directly to uh, companies globally. We also do have a, a browser-based survey solution, um, which is comparable to what uh, big corporations like uh, SurveyMonkey and Quartrix have. Plus, the, the first um, objective data channels that we integrated are emotion uh, tracking, what means that we can read facial expressions through our app or through the web browser, which allows us to understand um, how people react towards content, how much they like, um, for example, an advertising video. Plus, uh, with our patented eye tracking technology, we can also understand where someone is looking at when um, surfing on a website or when watching a, an advertising video. We founded the company in uh, July 2015. Um, until the, the launch of our platform, it was uh, fully self-funded by the founders. Since then, we have uh, more than 250 customers using Operia platform, including big Fortune 500 companies like Mercedes-Benz, Audi, BMW, um, and many others. Um, the, the revenue growth is also pretty nice. We made uh, 80K in 2017, and this year we will almost hit a million US dollars in revenue. Um, we're just about to sign a contract with a publicly traded company, um, which will give us access to 150 million users, which will skyrocket the, the amount of users that we have in our database, database plus um, up to 10,000 new customers that will use the Aperio platform to access data and opinions um, from our users, which will lead to an extreme huge revenue growth uh, in the next, uh, next few years. Thank you so much for your attention and looking forward to your questions. All right, Christian, thanks uh, for your presentation. Please kindly turn off it. And uh, now let's come questions to you, Dennis and Neil. Uh, what question you will be able to ask to Operia Pidapa? I will unmute you, Dennis. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, very interesting business model. I mean, obviously, that seems like the company is getting significant traction within the market. I guess uh, the only concern is, is that, uh, I mean, I think it's great that you're permission-based, but uh, what you're competing against in the marketplace today is, you know, the Facebooks, Googles, and whatnot that basically just steal your data and uh, just, you know, and sell it uh, uh, without compensation and without even your permission in any way, shape, or form. So is this, it, it seems that you're getting uh, traction in this market regardless of that, even though, uh, you know, you've been around four years, you're at 960 or, or you, you'll do almost a million dollars this year. Um, what, what, what is the catalyst for getting clients on board? And then um, I guess the, the other piece is that how much are you uh, relying on governments to enforce uh, uh, permission-based uh, data, uh, you know, from uh, uh, customers and you know, in the in the social media slash slash search genre. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good question. Um, let me show you a slide that's that's showing the that's showing the companies that we um, consider competitors right now. Um, First, regarding your, your question regarding like GDPR and governments. So what's, what's happening there is actually, we're not relying on that, but it's, it's great for us that it's, that it's actually happening because um, it has multiple effects. Um, one is that it simply makes um, consumers more aware of what's going on. And so consumers are starting to, to heavily protect their data. And that, in consequence, makes it extremely hard for so-called um, data brokers. And you see one data broker here, which is uh, Axiom, which is um, 
the biggest data broker in the US. Um, and what, the, what these guys are doing is they're collecting data from, or they're buying data from companies like Facebook, Amazon, and Google. And then they are cross-referencing the data package that packages that they are buying. That means they try to understand that what they get here from Amazon, what they get here from Facebook, and here from Google comes from the same user. And since uh, people are becoming smarter, they use different email addresses, for example, or they use incognito modes of the browser. And that, in consequence, now already um, led to the situation that the so-called data quality uh, is below 50%. That means more than 50% of all those cross-referencing things that are going on are wrong. And so the data quality is getting worse and worse. What means that companies um, start to try and, or start to look for new data sources where they can get valid data. And like getting valid data is, is one of the most important things um, if you want to build products and services based on that. So this is, that all is, is driving um, companies in our direction. And the great thing is that it's, it's, very, um, yeah, it's very open and honest um, what these companies are doing with our users. So they are actually willing to, 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 to tell their opinion, to sell their data, they get something in return. And the, the biggest competitors um, that we have, have on the market today are SurveyMonkey and Qualtrics. And these are um, purely web survey uh, software providers that are making um, revenues, um, annual revenues from 200 to 300 million US dollars. And they have crazy valuations uh, from 2 billion to um, 8 billion uh, with Qualtrics. They, got just, they just got sold to um, SAP for 8 billion US dollars. And these are, these are actually competitors that we have because they, they also um, are very open with their, their users. They tell them, look, you get a survey, you reply, you sell the results. Um, and this is actually what we do. Um, we're also very open, but we have some, um, I think, strong competitive advantages over them since we um, do not only do um, um, surveys, but also collect um, objective data such as um, emotions, eye tracking, data from wearables. So we can offer much more to companies already today. Plus, we're building our own database consumers. Sure, um, I have, uh, yeah, I just have a quick, a couple of quick follow-up questions. How, uh, maybe I missed this earlier. How many users do you currently have? And with this contract, uh, with this publicly traded company, mm -hmm. how, I mean, what type of uh, impact do you think that is going to be on the user-based growth? And then uh, third is, uh, how much ca uh, capital do you need to uh, get to cash flow positive? Yeah, so, um, Right now, we have um, own users. Um, we have around 20,000 own users. Um, in addition to that, um, there are like by, by a magnitude of 10 more users that belong to the companies. Um, what, we, what we specifically develop for the companies is that they can invite their own users to our database, but they belong to them, so no one else can touch them. What means Mercedes invites Mercedes company, uh, customers, but Audi cannot touch them. So if we sum that up, then we're almost at a quarter million um, users in our database, but only around 20,000 are public. So they're accessible for, for everyone. Um, with that publicly traded company, we're going to announce that in, in about one or two weeks from now, they will announce it. Um, so they have a, a user base of 150 million users. Um, and they want to drive um, a big amount of those 150 million users to our database so that their customers can interact with um, their, their user base. And they have, they have 10,000 customers, they have 150 million users. Um, if we only manage to get 10% of their users and 10% of their customers, then this is adding at least two zeros to our revenue. Thanks for these answers. And uh, let me give you a chance to uh, ask some questions to Giacomo Marcara. Uh, what would you love to ask? But Christian, can you please turn off this presentation? No problem.
Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, you 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 all clear. So I fully understand everything, and um, yeah, I, I get no questions because the the the, the question also before was really interesting. So um, yeah, just a question. I didn't hear probably the part of the compensation to the customers. So you will use your own token to pull the compensation. Yeah. Uh, w w and will you list in the token in, into any exchanges or uh, how to avoid the dump uh, and stuff like that? So you really are you concerned about that? And yes, you have yeah. you have applied. Yeah. So in the in the past, can you hear me? Because you're kind of frozen, or am I frozen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're okay. I'm okay. Okay. Um, so. We, before we had our token, we, we also have other um, ways for um, rewarding the users. Um, one is that companies can um, upload their own um, how's the English word, vouchers to our system. Um, so one very simple example is um, you're, in a, you're in a McDonald's, there's a poster, they ask you, hey, give us some feedback about how you liked, blah, blah, blah. You scan it, you get the survey, you answer it, and you get a McDonald's voucher. Very simple. Um, another one is an, is an Amazon voucher that we, that we have integrated. And now, in addition to that, okay. we're, offering, um, we're offering our own token. And we're trying to make the, um, the token um, as attractive as possible for our users. Um, an important thing is that the, the company we're partnering with, um, they're from the gaming space, so their user base is um, very open for crypto and crypto friendly, as you might know that, that gamers are like that. So that's, that's really um, very positive for the um, traction of our token. And then we're, okay. we're, what we're doing is that um, we're taking a um, so we call it a transaction commission off of each payment. That means a company pays, let's, let's take very simple numbers, pays one US dollar okay. for filling out the survey. Sure. In the normal case, we're taking off 10% um, of that. If someone decides to pay in data tokens, then the transaction is, is lower. That's one thing to, to make the token more attractive. Then when companies decide to, um, to buy tokens worth of 500 US dollars, then they get a discount on, on every additional license um, that they want to purchase to have more users okay. that can, can use Ethereum. So this is how we okay. are creating um, demand for the token and also creating um, demand for the usage of the token. Um, okay, cool. Thanks. Really clear. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, answers. Thanks uh, for your presentation, Christian. I know, Giacomo, that uh, you already voted, uh, but still, Opera P Data, how, how did you like that project? Yeah, it, it was um, cool because I'm pissed off about people stealing our data. <laughs> and on Netflix, that's the, the documentary about uh, the big hack on Cambridge Analytica. And it also in Italy, we, we just been a scandal uh, that politicians uh, has been corrupting private data uh, in order to get elected. So it's really cool. There's a lot of companies into these, so it would be really tough to um, to uh, yeah to compete. Yeah, but it's it's really interesting. Okay, and then it's your opinion. I love this company. I think that. So we know one of the uh, uh, issues that uh, one of the issues that pisses me off more than anything is the uh, big data uh, 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 you know that is being sold you know uh, without uh, permission by Google, Facebook, and everybody else. And then um, and a lot of the big data is that uh, it's it's hard to use because uh, you know it, you don't know what's quality and what's not. Quality. So you end up with. Uh, you end up with a, uh, you know, a lot of data that's unusable or is fake, or that, uh, or that you're 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 basically just stealing data, uh, you know, without my permission and using it uh, in in multiple different areas. So, uh, 
I mean, there's two companies I could flip a coin and tell you that either one uh, I, w I could vote yes for. Uh, and, but I think that this one probably uh, I, 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 would, uh, I would back this one. So you want that Opiri IP data will be in the finals from yes, you? Yes, yes. Okay. That, that's the okay. Have. So all now is fixed. Uh, so Opiri, our congratulations to Opiri IP data. However, let's move a little bit quicker to a couple uh, words yeah. about other companies because they also want to hear your feedback. All right, all right. This is only the first companies which participated in our TV show Blockchain Stars. In the next episode, we will present you the another ones. So thanks for watching this video and don't forget to start asking interesting questions below this video is because you can win tokens and coins from our partners. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Blockchain Stars are proud to present our partners. X-Rates. BC and Law, the Blockchain Summit Austria, Malta Blockchain Summit.